and other videos out there showing you how to restring an acoustic. I wanted to make this video for two purposes. One is to show you how I restring an acoustic, and two, this is a follow-up video to a video I made where I lowered the action on this guitar. It's been a while, and I just got the guitar out. It's exactly how I left it last time because I don't play acoustic that much. In my previous video on how to lower the action on this, I got a lot of comments from luthiers, hey, you should have flat sanded the saddle. In this video, I'm going to correct the one step I missed with this saddle, which I'll explain how you can lower the strings on your acoustic while we're at it. And then I'll show you how I restring this thing. Really, all we're going to need today is a pair of clippers to clip the strings. I'm going to put Elixir 10 through 47 on it, a string winder with the acoustic peg lifter. You don't have to have this, but it helps. You can just use the string clippers to grab the peg and lift up. Here's the strings. These are the phosphor bronze. These aren't the 8020 or whatever you call them. So I guess the difference is, is the 8020 bronze, it has a brighter sound. Phosphor bronze is more mellow, like a warmer sound. So if you can't decide the difference, or if you're wondering the difference, that's the difference. 8020 is bright, phosphor bronze is mellow and warm. Just for the heck of it, I got this micro ruler. I'm gonna use it for a couple of different things. Okay, the first steps, of course, is you wanna take the old strings off. I've seen some people do one string at a time for the purpose of keeping the pull on this bridge. The only problem with that is if you want to clean the fingerboard, it's kind of hard to do if you don't pull all the strings off. So we're going to pull all the strings off. The reason why I want to clean the fingerboard on this guitar is because I've never cleaned it since I got the guitar. I want this fingerboard clean. That's what I do on all guitars that I get that other people have been playing. I go through and take naphtha or zippo fluid, put it on a rag, and I'll wipe the fingerboard down. This pulls all of the finger oil out of the rosewood. Some people might be like, well, you don't want to pull all of the oils out of the wood. It really doesn't hurt. The wood will naturally absorb the oils from your fingers again. But that's what I usually do to get someone else's grime off of the fingerboard. I'll naphtha bath it and wipe it with a sock or a rag. Usually what I'll do, I'll loosen each post and then snip the strings with clippers and then we'll pull these pegs off. Now take your string clippers over the sound hole and clip the old strings. Then from here you'll be able to pull these strings off by lifting these pegs. You can see these are just popping right up. So inside of these peg holes, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing the string down in there being secured inside of this slot and the tip of this peg put, holding the nut in place. It's holding the ball end of this in place. Then of course, one thing I'm going to do is over here on a table, I'm going to sit all of these pegs down just so they're in the same order I took them off. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that's just what I'm going to do. And you can see there, I put the pegs in the same order they came off of the guitar, so they can go back in that order. Then you take the other side of your old strings here and just unwind them off of the posts. Like that. There's your old strings. I usually just roll these up, throw it in the trash. Now with the strings off, you can take a sock or a rag and get all of this dust and fingerprint marks and everything else off of the headstock and the body here. There's usually dust that accumulates under the bridge or under the strings up by the bridge. I'll have people commenting on that saying it's not under the bridge, but you know what I mean. Since this is my first time restringing this used guitar, one thing I do is I make sure these tuning peg nuts are tight. Now's a good time to do it. I'm just doing that with a socket, just finger tight. So those are good. Here's the Zippo fluid or naphtha. 
I just put a decent little amount on there. I don't completely saturate the fingerboard. See how clean that fingerboard is? And over time, with you playing it, your own skin oils have soaked back into the rosewood. The naphtha does dry it out a little bit, but it's okay. I just wouldn't naphtha bath it every time you change the strings. This is just more like a one-time thing for like a used guitar. Now, if you're just doing a restring, you don't have to do this part. This is just something I'm checking from a previous video that I seem to have overlooked. I lowered this saddle to lower the strings in a previous video, and I used a Dremel, and I didn't make sure it was flat on the bottom with sandpaper. So if you're just doing a restring, I'll try to hurry up through this and then continue on with the restring. Take a pair of needle nose pliers. Now, this table's perfectly flat right here. This is a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. There you go, folks. The saddle is flat. Put the saddle back in. Something to think about also, if you do take too much off of this saddle, you can always put shims in the slot, so you can always shim it back. I'm sort of pushing the limits of what I can do with this action, but I cannot go any lower than that. For those of you interested in the model number of this guitar, it's a full mahogany guild, and the model is a D125NAT, so I'm assuming that's natural. Elixir 10 through 47. Hopefully these are a lot lighter than what was on it. It was either 11 or 12s on it, man, because it's like, it was real, it's hard to play them things. Get the strings out. Strings have the gauge on the envelopes. Put them in order. You know what I'm saying? 23, 14, 10. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each string in its hole and then put the peg in. I'm going to go ahead and do all six of these first and get that out of the way. Starting with the 10, you can start wherever you want, whatever side you want. So you see there, there's the ball end of the string and here's the slot of the peg. You want the slot of the peg to have the end of the string go into, you know, like a ditch. And then the tip of the peg will push the ball end, will seat the ball end into the hole. And that's it. Ball end right over the hole, slotted side forward and push the peg in. Until you get the guitar tuned up, you might have to keep reseating these. They like to pop up if there's no tension on them. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go through and do the exact same thing on all of these strings here. There, all the strings are in and you have them just dangling here. Now this is how I wind the posts on guitars. Everybody does this different also. Some people have their own little measurement system of where they will bend or clip these strings. You know, I've seen videos where a guy will do one and a half post length clip, you know, certain measurements bend or they'll clip. What I started doing is just, instead of bending the string up and buttoning it against the post, I just started clipping the string and then letting the very end of the string go, go into the slot hole. The reason why you do this is because when you bend and clip, there's pieces of clip string that are pointed up it'll tear your gig bag up. It'll shred your gig bag if you string the guitar like that all the time. Now this isn't gonna, how I do my measurements is in finger bone length. <laughs> so this isn't gonna make any sense to you guys. A general rule though, is you don't have to leave as much room on the wounds as you do to the unwounds. 
So you can leave more and more length as you go to the unwounds and it still wind up the same. If you leave too much length on these wounds, they'll just wind up into a big ball on the post and you hardly have enough room. So I gradually increase the length that I cut as I go to the smaller strings. So I'll show you how I do it. Six string, I usually go one and a half finger lengths. So I'll put the tip of my finger, tip of my index there, one and a half, bring it up to one and a half, clip the string. Now, I pull the clipped end of the string all the way back until it just pokes out. Then you bend and start winding. You usually gotta secure this, keep this secure with your finger until you get a wind or two on there or to just pull right out. See, like that, like that. <laughs> so you gotta help it get a winding or two. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And once you get a winding, you wanna make sure that you're winding down the post. So the new windings are going towards the bottom of the post. which you've probably seen on a thousand other videos. Okay, you're probably not going to use this system anyways, but to just give you an idea, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I'm going to do and then fly through and get all these wound up in high speed. So yeah, the sixth string, I'll do one and a half links. The fifth string, I'll do two links. Fourth and third string, I'll do two and a half links. And then the second and first string, I'll do three, three and a half or... I won't quite wind the whole string on there. Let's wind these posts up. All right, we got it re-strung. Make sure the posts are still pushed in all the way. Everything's seated in its slot. We can tune this thing up now. All right, we're strung back with the elixirs. Man, this thing is so much easier to play with these strings. And it's uh, 230 seconds or 1 16th on the unwounds. Tapering up to between 230 seconds to 330 seconds. So that's a 64th. 564s? So yeah, this is super low for an acoustic. The last video, some people were saying, fret buzz, fret buzz. And that was because I play really hard. So that's the trade-off. Uh, so you guys with small hands or weak hands, this would be real, this setup would be real easy for you to play. But if you play hard with this setup, you're gonna get string buzz. A lot of people don't like that. But if you, as long as you just play normal, you're not gonna get the string buzz. This is basically set up, set up like an electric guitar. See, it's not too bad. You know this. Stuff that would be quite a hassle to do a lot of, unless you're used to playing big stringed acoustics.
Yeah. Thanks for checking the video out, everybody. Hopefully this helped you with your acoustic. I go live at least once a week and I play electric guitar on a live stream. Tuesday at 11 a.m. So yeah, subscribe, turn on notifications. You can click this button if you want or you know, you know how to subscribe. I don't have to give the standard speech, I guess. <laughs> All right, well have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye.